Living in an archipelagic country with more than 2 million square kilometers of highly productive seas, you would expect Filipinos to consume a lot of fish. And indeed, fish and seafood make up more than 40% of the average Filipino's animal protein intake. But would it surprise you to know that nearly half of the fish we buy in the market today come from fish farms. It shouldn't. For many years now, despite the region's extensive aquatic resources, the governments of Southeast Asia have had to tackle a difficult dilemma. How to meet the rising demand for fish from a growing population amid dwindling fish stocks and increased costs of production. In the Philippines alone, the population is projected to increase to nearly 150 million in 2050. Experts say our current pattern of fishery production and exploitation will not be enough to meet the domestic demand. We need to close the gap between supply and demand for food fish by reducing fishing pressure on wild stocks through the management of fisheries and conservation of fish and their habitats, while at the same time meeting the food fish needs of a growing population through ecologically sound and socially responsible aquaculture. Over the years, Researchers have introduced modern fish farming methods, hatchery and feed technologies, and new culture species that gained for aquaculture wide acceptance and commercial status at a global scale. As one of the four technical departments of the Southeast Asian Fisheries Development Center, or CFDEC, the Aquaculture Department, or AQD, has certainly played a role in harnessing the potential of aquaculture for economic development in Southeast Asia. Since it was established in 1973, AQD has been continuously generating new fish farming technologies, testing them to confirm technical and economic feasibility and refining and packaging them into training and other modes of dissemination for eventual adoption by practitioners. Throughout this process, AQD consults and holds dialogues with stakeholders and collaborators to ensure that priority areas are addressed. Technology and information are effectively disseminated and impacts, both beneficial and adverse, are known and accurately measured. Guided by its triple mandate of research, human resources development, and information dissemination, and working alongside government institutions like the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, AQD has developed technologies for full-cycle aquaculture for a number of commodities, including tiger shrimp, tilapia, milkfish, catfish, carps, mussels, oysters, giant freshwater prawn, seaweed, abalone, mud crab, sandfish, and high-value marine fishes such as sea bass, groupers, red snapper, rabbit fish, and pompano. In particular, 
AQD played a pioneering role in the captive breeding and seed production of milkfish and together with BFAR implemented the National Milkfish Breeding Program in the early 80s. Today, local hatcheries produced half of the seed requirements of our milkfish industry. These hatcheries have kept milkfish affordable and ensured its place on the average Filipino family's table by providing fish farmers with a steady supply of quality fry, reducing their dependence on dwindling supplies of wild seed stock, and growing milkfish farming from a trap-and-grow operation based on fry that comes in with a tide, to a full-fledged industry that provides about a fifth of the country's 25 kilograms of fish consumed each year by the average Filipino. But as important as aquaculture has become to our economy, it has created its own very serious problems. Problems that can undermine the future not only of people who directly depend on it, but also of those whose livelihoods are affected by its mere presence. Often, the culprit is intensive fish farming that pushes production to the limits. The use of high stacking densities led to diseases and the eventual collapse of the once booming tiger prawn farming industry. Intensive farming, as well as improper feeding that leads to poor water quality, is also likely to blame in the case of milkfish farming in Pangasinan, where fish kills have become an almost yearly occurrence. There are also socioeconomic and equity issues associated with the entry of capital-intensive aquaculture operations in fishing areas that are predominantly artisanal. Despite its highly toted employment generation dimensions, aquaculture can lead to economic displacement rather than create jobs because small fishers are often ill-equipped to participate in its benefits. Moreover, the culture of groupers and similar species that are gaining popularity for their high value is often heavily dependent on wild fry stocks that support small-scale fisheries. Looking ahead, the continued growth of the industry is threatened by poor hatchery and farming practices that result in poor quality seed stock, high mortality, and unprofitability, as well as market forces that translate to considerably lower margins for fish farmers and increasing cost of farmed fish compared to chicken and pork. And environmental factors such as climate change, the full impact of which we have yet to fully understand. As a staunch supporter of the Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries, AQD is fully committed to addressing these issues and gives primary consideration to four priorities of the Southeast Asian region. First, development of responsible aquaculture technologies and practices. Second, responsible use of aquatic genetic resources for the purpose of aquaculture. Third, adoption of measures to avoid environmental degradation, and finally, promotion of environmentally sound aquaculture methods and commodities. AQD's research and development agenda focuses on five thematic areas that reflect these priorities. One of these programs is the Meeting Social and Economic Challenges in Aquaculture. These issues define the scope 
and coverage of MCCAP as follows. Enhancing the role of aquaculture in addressing food income and livelihood security through improved comprehensive and interdisciplinary approaches. Second, it aims to promote sustainable aquaculture through enabling policies that support the management of natural and environmental activities in the culture of giant freshwater prawn. Third, the program aims to enable mechanisms, institutions, and infrastructure to encourage adoption of better aquaculture practices. Fourth, it also aims to understand and improve linkages from production to marketing and trade of fisheries products to support small and medium enterprises or MSEs towards development. And finally, it aims to strengthen the capacity of aquaculture stakeholders by mainstreaming specific rural and peri-urban aquaculture programs and policies in local, national, and international development programs. The Philippines is one of Asia's major contributors to the world production of important tropical aquaculture commodities. And this is mainly due to the fact that we have developed the technologies for breeding and farming this species. Apart from this, we have an increased awareness on the importance of using not only good husbandry practices, but also of using improved quality seed stock to increase fish production both for food security and stock conservation. The Aquaculture Department of CFDEC has as one of its five thematic programs the Program on Quality Seed for Sustainable Aquaculture. Uh, the program espouses the need for developing, verifying, and promoting methods that can help the industry promote, produce quality marketable size aquatic products by using good quality fingerlings. The goal of the program is to generate, verify, and promote technologies to ensure sustainable production of quality seeds for aquaculture and stock enhancement. It comprises mainly of R&D activities that use conventional stock management and improvement methods such as domestication, brood stock management, um, strain evaluation, selective breeding, genetic improvement on uh, traditional and emerging freshwater and marine species again either for aquaculture and or for stock enhancement. Uh, still on the thematic program, this is uh, promoting healthy and wholesome aquaculture, but this time is more focused on the nutrition and feed development. The objective is to develop strategies, feeding strategies for some fish species like freshwater prawn, uh, milkfish, abalone, crab, and others, okay? And also to identify fish meal substitutes and uh, make known the percent replacement in the diet because fish meal nowadays uh, is becoming uh, scarce and more expensive. And then number three is to develop uh, nutritious, cost-effective, and environment-friendly feed that will suit the needs of time, okay? And lastly, we need to develop among fish farmers and make them understand the importance of the healthy feeding practices that can be applied to uh, the culture plants. Healthy and wholesome aquaculture is one of the thematic programs aimed to address the role of attaining sustainable aquaculture production through provision of protein needs for the growing human populace. This program actually aims to contribute to improvement of aquaculture production through innovations in nutrition and feeding and fish health management and in preserving the environmental integrity of aquaculture. Specifically for the fish health management component of this program, the following are the objectives. First, investigate the efficacy of probiotics and rationalize the need and application of diagnostics that will ensure biosecurity within culture systems and keep out exotic pathogens, especially transboundary pathogens. Secondly, promote the wider use of conventional diagnostics as well as new methods, especially for newly reported emerging diseases. And the third objective, to find effective alternative, safe, 
drugs or chemicals that is including natural products to manage aquaculture diseases in lieu of the harmful chemicals and drugs which have been discouraged and banned for use due to quality and safety issues. The Southeast Asian Fisheries Development Center, Aquaculture Department or CIFDEC AQD, is implementing maintaining environmental integrity through responsible aquaculture programs. So it's one of the core departmental programs being implemented by the Aquaculture Department. The program is mainly involved in uh, developing um, aquaculture activities that will address uh, not just uh, food security but also sustainability by addressing issues of uh, biodiversity and then environmental quality, particularly water and sediment quality in aquaculture sites in comparison with non-aquaculture sites. So we want that aquaculture activity not only produces food but also the process will not further deteriorate the environment where we are doing aquaculture, both in inland or freshwater as well as the marine environment. Aquaculture operations and productions are now severely affected by adverse changes in climatic conditions. To address this problem, CIFTEC AQD's thematic program on adaptation to climate change aims to address the urgent measures that are required to ensure continued production of aquaculture commodities under changing world climate. The overall goal of the program is to identify the accompanying changes in the environment brought about by the changing climate that may affect the aquaculture sector, prepare the sector to the possible effects that the changes may have on aquaculture operations, minimize and mitigate adverse impact of climate change in aquaculture, and ensure the continued operations of all aquaculture production system under changing climatic conditions. Uh, CIFNEC AQD has a framework in implementing the activities uh, in R&D. So we at the research division, uh, we start with uh, developing science-based technologies. And once we have developed these technologies, uh, these are passed on through the technology verification and demonstration division, where these technologies uh, are being uh, verified in a large-scale uh, facilities. So once uh, the technology is uh, perfect, we package them into uh, training courses and we also prepare uh, manuals for uh, the benefit of our uh, collaborators in the industry. So we also partner with the media institution to develop uh, techno demo videos uh, in order for us to promote and disseminate our technologies in a broader uh, market. So we also have uh, websites where uh, these technologies, uh, information on these technologies can be downloaded. So from our stakeholders, uh, the collaborators and the industry, we get feedback from them. And then this goes back to the research division and we refine the technologies. So we're working on several commodities from marine to freshwater uh, aquaculture species under the five different uh, thematic programs. Clearly, there is much to do to improve aquaculture production in the region so it can more effectively contribute to food production and economic development. There is still room for expansion and certainly much room for improvement. With support, nascent culture technologies for high-value species such as grouper are a promising area that could be properly developed and made to conform to the principles of responsible aquaculture. And the culture of less known but promising species like abalone could be commercialized. There is a measure of comfort in knowing that our road ahead has been mapped out. In June 2011, 
senior officials of the ASEAN CIFDEC member countries adopted a plan of action on sustainable fisheries for food security for the ASEAN region towards 2020. The plan outlines important measures that ASEAN CIFDEC countries have committed to undertake to address the social, economic, and environmental aspects of sustainable aquaculture to improve food security, livelihood, employment, and poverty alleviation. Together with your support, rest assured that CIFDEC AQD shall continually strive to fulfill its mandate for a better, more equitable, and more sustainable aquaculture, not just for the current generation, but for the future generations to come. Our confidence in the future rests in the hope that government will follow through and work hand in hand with the scientific and stakeholder communities to ensure aquaculture makes good on its long-held promise of economic, social, and environmental sustainability. And the promise of healthy fish on our tables. to make a better